Welcome to Conversations with Creative Vagabonds, Thinkers, and Innovators. This is the place where great minds come to chat, and I am your host, Sandra Lee Schubert, and welcome to the show. Well, hello, everyone. I am very excited for our guest today. She is actually a neighbor of mine, which is very exciting. So I get to interview somebody that I get to see in person, and that that's great fun. I We have on the air Loretta Wollering. Wollering. I got it wrong already, right, Loretta? Is the director. <laughs> it's quite in, all right. <laughs> You'll have to correct me. Is the director of Eternal Gardens Tai Chi, and she joins us to discuss how the modern world can benefit from the ancient practice of Tai Chi. She is dedicated to helping people improve the quality of their health and thus the quality of her life. And you can find out more about her at her site, which is internalgardens.com. So, Loretta, welcome to the show. It's so nice to have you on. And, and please pronounce your name correctly, even though I just asked you before we started the show. Oh, that's fine, Sandra. Well, welcome. Welcome to uh, to you. It's great to hear you, and, and welcome to all our listeners. Uh, my name is Loretta Wallering, uh, W-O-L-L-E-R-I-N-G. That's the curse of a long name. <laughs> Good to be here. <laughs> Corey, thank you. And, you know, I was thinking about it because I was talking about Tai Chi as being an ancient practice, but then I thought, I I don't know, it may not actually be one of the ancient practices. It may be a more modern um, uh, thing. So is is it an ancient practice or where does it originally come from? Yeah, Tai Chi, or as it's known as Tai Chi Chuan, um, is an art from China. It originated actually as a martial art, and it was systematized. Um, theoretically, they, they most people think around perhaps the 14 to 1600s. It started being systematized, but it's based on very old principles of martial arts and energy cultivation. Um, but what they found over the years was that the people that practiced Tai Chi on a regular basis seemed to be exhibiting very good states of health rejuvenation and helping to heal some old injuries or ailments that other things perhaps didn't do. So they noticed that, gee, there's something about this art, the way it's being done, the philosophy, how it's working. And then it started becoming popular as a health exercise, um, especially the people in the court wanted to learn Tai Chi. And then, of course, you know, they're not too interested in, in working too hard as a martial art. So, um, it developed more and more as this practice that's now done slowly, methodically, mindfully, meditatively, and using the body in ways that help to regenerate the health and the structure of the body instead of ripping it up. So um, that, that's really, in a way, Tai Chi is quite old, yeah. And um, it, it's uh, native to China, you know, and it took a while to really propagate through the West. I think yoga got a lot more popular more quickly. But what yoga is to India, Tai Chi is to China. Right. And I, I, I had told you about my experience of living in Flushing and waiting at the train and watching all the sort of the elderly people gather together in the morning doing their Tai Chi exercises. And just or just in a group or one just one person off in a corner and they were just you know, very meditatively and quietly doing their exercises and they seem perfectly happy and perfectly content with that. But you said that it's also, it was, as you said, initially was a martial arts mm-hmm. thing, which is and it's different. Still candy, yes. Yeah. So what is, I guess, what is the difference between a martial arts practice and a a practice that, everybody does or or I want to say normal person that's not the right word but it's <laughs> maybe more common right <laughs> more common. yeah yeah 
Oh, that's a great question, you know, because um, people when people see Tai Chi, as you have in New York City, you know, you see maybe um, the folks gathering together in the Chinese communities, and they're doing it so slowly and meditatively, and then people ask, well, how on earth can you fight with that? And um, that's a very good question. Tai Chi <laughs> can be practiced both ways. It has, it can be practiced. It Basically, the idea is first you master yourself. And that's why you're doing things slowly and methodically. You're really refining your movement. And, you know, this is really like how musicians practice, too. When a musician gets a complex piece of music, they're going to go over it slowly and carefully. They're going to look at every note, every nuance. They're going to think about it. They're going to experiment with it. They're going to try to understand it. And then if that's actually a fast piece of music or to be played in with a presto or a fast tempo, then they will speed it up once they understand what they're looking at and how to get the nuances. So Tai Chi is like that as well. When you practice it martially, it, it's done more like Kung Fu practice, and it is done to match the opponent or be just a tiny bit ahead of the opponent. I've actually done Tai Chi martially. It, um, it's, it's a heck of a, <laughs> of a training, and it's it's incredible, uh, but it's, it's quite different, the the application. You know, a lot of the mental part of it is the same, the, the training, the, the mental aspects, and a lot of the body structure and the movements and, and the way you're using physics and metaphysics through your body is quite the same, but your intent is different. So the way you use it is going to be different, of course, as well. So when you do it like the... Um, the common everyday person, if you will, <laughs> um, you would be doing it much more slowly because your intent is focusing on rejuvenating your body and letting the stress out of the tissues of your body and aligning your energy and your body for health. So um, it's more meditative in that regard. So th th it can be done each way. In fact, Chuan of Tai Chi Chuan, Chuan itself means fist or martial form of, and that points to its uh, heritage in the martial arts. Okay, so is it more of a, as a martial arts, is it more of an offensive or defensive uh, technique? I'd say, yeah, I'd say both, but probably a little bit more defensive because a lot of it is how to let your opponent waste their energy or how to basically redirect their energy and uh, at the same time not sacrifice yourself or overwaste yours. But, um, you know, um, make no mistake, I mean, in the art of Tai Chi martially, there's, there's plenty of strikes, plenty of kicks and hits and, and other forms of very damaging offensive attacks, use of the elbows, use of the shoulders, the knees, the, you know. It, it's um, There's even throws in Tai Chi when you get really into the traditional arts of it. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that's that's not really how I do it anymore. That Because to me, you know, when I look at Tai Chi, I ask, why am I doing this? What do I really want to get out of this? What's important to me? And I think that's the most important question that people have to ask when they take up any physical practice or any developmental practice. Right. So they... they... So the the Tai Chi version, the Tai Chi martial arts part, um, it still incorporates the essence of Tai Chi in terms of mind body, but it's it's the application is different. So you're you're not fighting somebody, but it's it's the L, the um, I'm trying to think what I'm trying to get to. So. Not everybody who practices Tai Chi just as a meditative form is going to be a fighter, so to speak. So somebody who practices Tai Chi is not going to be necessarily able to defend themselves. However, if you study the martial arts part, you could defend yourself and still have the body body and mind kind of aspect going on. Is Is that correct? Or Oh, yes. That's a very good way to look at it. Yeah, and again, it's you know it's the application and the intent of how it's being used. Um, absolutely. So I think a really good way to look at it is, let's say somebody who is an expert chef, 
a very good chef, and they're very good at the art of cutting, and they know how to use a knife, they know which knife to use for which purpose, and how to wield it properly, how to use it properly, and they can do things very quickly, very precisely, very accurately. Um, but at the same time, somebody who's using a knife for more like a sword, more like defense, they're going to have much different application of how they use it, their angles, how they hold it, how they have to take care of the blade. How they, all these things are very similar. They have uh, the same root, but the application intent and the practice will, of course, be different. So um, I think that's really a, a way to look at it. And, and that's really the more rare application of Tai Chi. But I'd like to mention it because, you know, a lot of people don't know that about Tai Chi at all. Right. No, I, and the, I certainly didn't know that that element of it because I, I have been used to seeing people just very quietly, slowly, methodically do it. And that's it's interesting to learn the aspects. But I guess, you know, what I'm curious about is, you know, growing up with you know David Carradine and Kung Fu as a, mm-hmm. as a martial arts or Chuck Norris as a martial arts you know, in, in thinking of Tai Chi, where that, like, how do they, they fit together or not fit together? I mean, what is different about those practices? I mean, are the basis, is the basis of it the same in terms of the, the mind-body connection? How do they, they differ? Um, just so I can clarify in my mind what those those differences are, I guess. Uh, With Tai Chi, a lot of the focus is first on how to harness gravity through your body, through structure, and through attaining a state of what we call Pung, which is, it's very hard to explain that, but it's it's where you have your alignment so perfect that you can just let the force go through you, but at the same time, you can take leverage from the earth and deliver that force into someone else in a powerful blow or strike, etc., there is a practice also called push hands in Tai Chi where you're trying to go very slow first with your partner or opponent and understand and match their movements. So there's a lot of things that are similar in the beginning and then they diverge. And then at the highest level, I think a lot of those martial arts become similar in the end, uh, their highest level. But, you know, Tai Chi really has that focus on using your body always in ways that will not, sacrifice your joints, your muscles. It will always keep you in an advantageous position in terms of the structure of your body and your mind. And the idea is how to really not let let anything affect you. So how to let not the opponent, not, let them not affect you. Let your own body work, body leveraging, the laws of physics, you know, friction, momentum, and energy, and, and um, force, and power, and gravity, how to not let that affect you in a negative way. So that, that's, you know, the focus. And it, it comes from a base of Taoism. That's really the philosophy of Tai Chi. It's, uh, it's not a religion. It's a philosophy which is native to China. Okay. So um, the, the, uh, that's, I, it's, I think it's interesting because the, the Western mind, or at least my Western mind, isn't always attuned a with using energy in that way it's it's always fighting against energy and i i always think about the walking up you know the the hills in in town that there's always a point where i'm <laughs> fighting against those hills and it makes it very hard and there's always a point where i if i kind of relax my body i can get up those hills a little easier so it's you know I, to me that's that kind of thing where i think about it's like how do i use my energy when I'm going uphill to get me up the hill in a better way that I'm not tiring myself out. And when I'm doing it correctly, and I don't know what correctly even means. I just know when I get up the hill and I'm out of breath, I've not done a good job (laughs) when I've gotten up the hill (laughs) and I'm reasonably okay. Then I'm like, okay, I've done a good job. I used my energy well. And I I think, you know, I know for for me that idea of using my body in that way where I'm I'm working with everything around me and not against everything is 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 a different concept to get around, you know. I mean, because you you have boxing where you're 
you're always hitting. You're you're hitting against something. It seems, and maybe I could be wrong about what boxing is too. So, you know, but that well, I think you're really on the right path there. Um, especially, you know, how to what I always think of it with Tai Chi is how to take the struggle out of everything. How to take the struggle out of effort because it's kind of wasteful, and that can be, that's a principle that you can use abstractly for anything. You can use it like, like how you're using it, walking up a hill. You can use it, that's something very simple and physical, and then you can also use it for, you know, psychologically, how are you dealing with something, how, uh, or how are you interacting in a certain situation, or just any kind of mental, even spiritually. I mean, it can become something very esoteric down to something very mechanical and simple. You know, how to take that unnecessary struggle out of everything and clean and clarify what's going on. And by doing that, of course, we take a lot of tension and a lot of stress out of our body. And we all know that stress is the number one killer. So by doing that, those sort of Tai Chi type of principles, those Taoist sort of principles and learning little techniques and methods of how to do that, then definitely it follows that, of course, we're going to improve our health and, and, and the way we feel and, therefore, our longevity. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about how if, you know, for the typical American getting into this, you know, because I, it, it may be very different in China how one – enters into a Tai Chi practice than here. So what would normally, if you're just wanting it for health or, or, or strength or whatever, what would be the process of, of developing a practice? Mm. And well, are there levels there's... to developing a practice? Oh, yeah. I think as with anything, really. Um, first is, of course, the curiosity and exploring it, seeing if it's um, if it's right for you, if it's something you like, and then escalating it from there, build, building it up. So uh, before, I mean, I, I had a very formal training. You know, I was formally apprenticed, and I wound up uh, studying under a grandmaster from China, and eventually I ran his school and helped him edit his book. And uh, his name was Grandmaster Zhou Tsonghua. He's uh, deceased from a car accident now, but. Um, yeah, I mean, how I started even was I heard about it first, you know, and I think that's how a lot of people come across, you know, they hear about it. They may, they might see something in a, in a book or a magazine or a newspaper or online about all these studies that are coming forth that are extolling the virtues of Tai Chi and how good it is for health, how many scientific studies are showing that it's so effective for chronic problems and the mind, the body. So first there's that curiosity, you know, and I did a martial art and I hurt myself and I heard something about Tai Chi, but back then it was quite rare. So I tried to gather more information. So that's the first stage. The second stage is finding somewhere, <laughs> somewhere somehow that you can try it. Of course, now we're, we're blessed with the Internet and all of its online uh, information that we can just tap into. So maybe you would buy a video or try a course or go somewhere or, you know, maybe go to a continuing education class or something very, very, very introductory, very bare bones like that. And then if you like it, then, you know, the next step is, hmm, well, how do I find maybe some workshops or or a serious school or something like that? You know, and that's really where I am now, too, is that I teach at my formal school as well as have basic online programs. And so it goes on and on and on like that. And then you just get into it deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper because you start seeing more and more benefits. You know, so as long as you hold that motivation and you keep feeling those benefits, I think the curiosity is what drives it and the results that you keep getting. So, yeah, there's, defi there's definitely stages. And some people like to stay at a basic stage because that's all they want, that's all they need. And some people... Like me, you know, we want to get to the nexus of it all, the kernel of it all, and we just keep going deeper and deeper. Um, so, yeah, it's. I think that's really the progression of how it goes. Okay. So you so you could have just a basic thing practice, like you, you there in yoga. There's just maybe a salutation to the sun that you do every morning. That could sort of be be it. So I, I I wonder though what do you find people's reaction to it is, to Tai Chi is 
especially since it mm-hmm. seems to be a slower method and people are used to sort of, you know, spin class or hot yoga mm. or something that really gets them sweaty and, you know, feeling revved up. Do you, do the West, does the Western mind have a hard time adjusting to mm-hmm. a, something that seems slower paced and, and, Feel not feeling the you know thinking they've gotten their workout. I mean, I, I don't know. I haven't done it, so I don't know if you feel like you have a workout after you're done it or not. But I'm just I'm curious about that. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, you make a great point. You know, in the West, it has become, and it, I should even say, in the modern world, we even see it now in the Eastern countries as well. It's the, the modern mindset is often that you have to feel extremes, you have to push, you have to go fast, you have to go furious, you have to feel pain right away, you have to, you know, right away, right away, right away. But I think what happens is after a while, some people are tired of that merry-go-round and they want to come back. They want to get off that, that fast food, extreme sensation, sensory bombardment, and they want to come back to something, you know, there's like something inside of them that says, you know, let's look at more like nature, like how something grows, how something takes its time and grows and unfolds properly, like a tree. You know, I mean, a tree has deep roots and it lasts. It's not like a a day fly that its whole life cycle is over in a day or something that grows fast and furious and then boom, it's gone. So I think people sometimes feel that, that intuitive pull inside of them, you know, like there must be more or there's something else that I'm missing. And I think that's what leads them to something slower. Now, Tai Chi can be a heck of a workout because you can go very deep in the postures. You can sit very deeply and widely. So you get a lot of stretching and you get a lot of stability strength. Um, It also trains the fascia and the tendons and other connective tissue. And it also builds an extreme amount of patience, but gently. So when people are in the present like that and they give themselves that chance to feel more deeply instead of covering it all up and and trying to rush, Uh, then they start discovering other parts of themselves. They start getting deeper into their body and its functioning. They get deeper into their own psychology and its functioning. And when you get deeper into it, then, of course, you have the ability to get more control over it. Instead of covering it up, covering it up, they get to really get deeper. Okay, so I know... Part of why I've talked to you about it is because I have, I've had a couple of, actually three bad winter falls here in town. And now I'm sort of a little unbalanced. I know I'm unbalanced. <laughs> and and I also know that, like, as today I, I'm having trouble because my foot hurts and I can't put mm-hmm. weight on it. And I, my jo- you know, my knees hurt because they've never been great knees anyway. And some some of our conversation has been about Tai Chi being able to affect those kinds of things in my body, you know, getting me back to a place where my balance may become, may come back where I don't feel like I'm so wobbly all the time or that my joints feel a little better uh, on the whole. And so how, how does Tai Chi really uh, affect that? If you were to just take me as a case study, so to speak, (laughs) how, how would Tai Chi, Tai Chi come in and take care of that or how would that work I guess well it would work we work with what you have that's how we always start and it's it's almost like teaching a person or giving them the techniques and the you know the secrets if you will of how to become a green thumb gardener so you know how there's some people they can take any dying plant anything that just looks miserable <laughs> and they can just nurse it back to this luxurious growth you know, and you look at them and you think, what, is, what kind of voodoo did you do here? <laughs> but um, they just know what to do. They know exactly what to do and, more importantly, when to do it and how to do it. And I think that's really what Tai Chi is doing. You know, we, we, um, when we're doing, when we uh, look at a person, people like me who teach Tai Chi, we look at a person and we know exactly, okay, this is wrong, that's wrong. How do we fix it? Well, first of all, we always go under the premise that the body can heal itself. Case in point, when you have a cut, it heals. It wants to heal. You know, it scabs over. No matter how old you are, it always wants to heal. The cells always want to turn over. They always want to regenerate. So that is deep inside of us. It's always there. And all we have to do is use a few techniques to just bring it out more and more. 
and also we need patience in that um, nothing is a quick fix. Even if you take a pill, it really doesn't it doesn't fix a chronic pain problem. It just kind of masks it. So Tai Chi goes back into the healing. You know how how to really fix that part of the nervous system, how to fix that part of the body, how to heal it, how to help the body strengthen or accelerate the healing process. And it, I've seen it in people in all ages. I mean, I've had uh, I've had a client, I've had a student who was with me for quite a while. She had a full prosthetic leg from her thigh down, and she wasn't this skinny little athletic girl at all. She was in a motorcycle accident. And she was to the point where she could kick, she could jump, she didn't use her cane, she could walk upstairs. It, it was really incredible. Um, and again, it's a testament to the fact of the power of Tai Chi. So for hundreds and hundreds of years and millions and millions of people in tai, doing Tai Chi in China and, and abroad, you know there's got to be something to it. <laughs> so I think the biggest problem is, is knowing that it can be done even when everything around you says no. Uh, like, no, oh, you get older, that's how it is, or, you know, oh, no, there's not much we can do. And, oh, you know, you have this mindset that we're surrounded with, and I think Tai Chi really provides an alternative for that, one that actually works. And, I mean, right. I've, I've done incredible things with it, too, so. No, yeah, no, and it's interesting because I do, I, it was funny because I was walking up the block and, and somebody said, well, why did you take this block? This is not the normal block. And I said, well, it's a flatter block block and my knee hurts you know so I'm mm-hmm. going for a you know because I didn't want to have to go up the hill and put stress on my my knee and uh and he was like oh it sucks getting old <laughs> <You> know, well, <laughs> I said, well that's really yeah maybe it does but at the same token I'm thinking well there I think there are things that are around that can really you know make Maybe you don't stop getting old, but you you can make that process better, and it's finding that process, you know, and just figuring that out. I've been thinking of a woman who was in her seventies who took up weightlifting, and yeah. went from somebody who couldn't walk and you know really you know restricted to some this gorgeous physical specimen and and in much better health i mean you know her diet shifted everything started shifting because she just started this exercise at the level she was at so i'm thinking in terms of tai chi for people across the board it seems that it's a gentle enough process that it it can really start to shift a lot of things within a person's body, mind, and whatever else they've got to get shifted, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's it's really like planting that, that acorn or that seed of a tree. At first you think, oh, it's it's nothing. It's just this little dinky seed. What what can come of it? It's just, But if you put it in the ground and you give it the right conditions and you have the patience and you take care of it, you know, first you have this wimpy mm-hmm. little sapling that comes up and it takes forever before it breaks the ground and you think oh my god this little thing what what's this you know (laughs) and then you just you hold the faith and you keep working on it you keep letting it get the sunshine you keep it you know keep it safe and you keep keep it strong keep it well fed and then over time this thing starts growing and growing and getting stronger and taking stronger root and you know and then you, you look back and you say whoa Wow, this this has come a long way. This thing is really strong, and it and it can withstand all these other conditions, whereas before it couldn't. And Tai Chi does that with the body, you know. And I think the biggest block really is 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 the people's mindset nowadays that we think if it's not immediate and if it's not extreme, then it's not going right. to work. Or where they come in with the the doubt that they're surrounded by everyone. You know, we we really do have a horrible mindset about aging and losing hope and you know, that there's no alternatives and there's no, and that's sad because if you have that mindset and you keep it, then of course nothing will work because it's like always pulling the plant out of the soil. It'll never grow. (laughs) Now, do you find, I mean, or have you seen this yet? Because maybe, and maybe even too early to tell, there are so many studies coming out now about people's mind in the digital age and how, you know, people are just have their their attention span is so much much shorter because of 
internet and social media and all that. Uh, have you seen that effect in your students or people coming in? Are they? Have you noticed them being less patient than they were five years ago, or is, or has that not yet sort of taken hold in 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 the in Tai Chi? I'm sorry to say, but yes, I've seen that happen. I think it started really around the 1990s. Uh, oh, really? That early? At my, oh. yep, yep, in the mid-90s or so, when I was the director of my teacher's school, and I, at first I was a manager there, and then I was the director of his retreat center, um, people would just, they would show up, they would do, you know, they were very dedicated, they were very focused, and then I'd say probably around the mid-90s, people started just kind of losing it, and it's very hard for people to stay with things. And I think, I do definitely think it's all the stimulation. You know, people are just so busy, so overwhelmed, so pulled. But what I do also find is the students that I do have that are in my school tend to really stick with it, and they are powerful. They have become very, very powerful individuals. So it's kind of it's kind of like six of one or you know it's a dozen of another. It's it's this strange thing that's going on with all this overstimulation, and it's just that some people, you know, kind of like that Matrix movie, the movie The Matrix. Uh, you know, all of a sudden they just realize what's happening around them, and, and they just realize that how they're being stimulated and how it's working on their system, and then they just want to unshackle themselves from it and get power over it. You know, without totally leaving all those things, but how to, how to get above them, how to manage them, and instead of have those things manage them. Right. Uh, and those are the people I see that really just stick with it and really get tremendous benefits. I mean, it's incredible, some of the things I've seen with the healing and the rejuvenation and even just the creativity uh, increase in some of these people. It's amazing. No, that's that's interesting. So, so people can sort of recover, I guess, from overstimulation in in oh, some yeah. way and i i i'm g- gathering that i know for me you know i i'm a writer and and i find now that i have less patience to sit with writing for an extended period of time where i used to be able to sit with mm-hmm. it for a while and just write or play with it or just focus on it i find it's really hard harder for me now to focus on it than it had been in the in the past, so you're you're sort of giving me some hope that I can I can get back <laughs> to that or that place. Yes, and I think a lot again. of the um, the meditative work that we do, the breathing work, and all that does help facilitate that because then all of a sudden a body, the person's body, their internal chemistry shifts, their mind shifts, and then everything it's it's like law of attraction or it's like a domino effect and everything follows suit and then they, you know, it's easier to concentrate again. So yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about, um, because we, we have just about 12 minutes left already, Mm -hmm. but let's talk Mm -hmm. a a bit about how, what you do and, 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 and I'd like to hear a little bit more about how you, you got, got into this and then, and then your convention, because I, I think that's also interesting, that that we, the thing that you get to do every year. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. my background is um, almost a quarter century of Tai Chi, so I'll, I'll condense it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had done oh, yeah, another martial it. art. and <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll give you the juicy bits, uh, at least what okay. I think are juicy. Um, I had done another martial art while I was in college, and I had hurt my knee very badly. I was on a cane. I had heard of Tai Chi and how healing it is. Uh, I, all of a sudden, something popped up in my college. And this, of course, was before the Internet, so it was hard to come by a lot of these things. So I hobbled over there, and I tried it. They really didn't know what to do with me, and so I just said, well, you know, I'll do what I can. And I felt better. I liked it. I was attracted to it. I did more research. Um, long story short, I went back to that semester. I, I went back to my family in Vernon, New Jersey, which is uh, northern New Jersey in Sussex County, and I was going stir crazy. I was told by the doctor not to really do anything heavily physical for about six months because I really had to let my knee heal, and you know nothing extreme, just gentle things. Um, but I was going stir crazy. I wanted to go back into. Uh, martial arts. I wanted to do something that was a little bit more active, and 
so what happened was I, I went in the phone book and I found this place called Tai Chi Farm that was on the border in Warwick, New York. I went there. Long story short, there was this Chinese gentleman there. It was so surreal. You know, it was this, this old farm property that was converted. I thought it was a hippie farm or a fruit farm. I had no idea it was actually a Tai Chi retreat center. <laughs> and his name was Zhou Tsong Hua, a mathematician that wrote 30 math textbooks. And he taught in Taiwan. He escaped from China to Taiwan during the war. And then he came to America. And uh, I started studying under him. And then eventually he asked me to apprentice under him. And then I started accompanying him around the world and um, helping him teach, and, and I had this all of this stuff. Now, while I was going to grad school, I started slacking off on my Tai Chi practice. And I think it was for, at that time I had every rational purpose for it because, I, well, I had to study, I had to focus on my schoolwork, you know, I'm in grad school, I had to do my work. So I let it fall by the wayside and I contracted Crohn's disease. Uh, Crohn's disease developed inside of me. It's it's kind of an autoimmune system thing. It's it's like ulcerative colitis. It's terrible. And my teacher admonished me and said, you have to get back to Tai Chi. That is the thing that you need the most, <laughs> not the thing that you should put in the back burner when you're so busy. You need to regulate your life. You know, da, 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 da. So I would just do, again, 15 minutes a day, and I started getting better and better and better. I got rid of my ulcerative colitis slash Crohn's disease. My knee was totally healed. My depression was getting, everything was just healing up, like, again, like wildfire. And here I was already older, and it just kept improving. And finally, in 1998, my teacher had a car accident, and he died. And I just continued his work. I took over his place until his family closed it. And I was an editor of his book. Now I have my own book out in Barnes and & Noble and all over the Internet. Um, and I continue to teach Tai Chi, and I also carry on the Tai Chi convention, the expo that my teacher created. So that's that's kind of my Tai Chi life in a nutshell. I mean, there's a lot more in there, of course. I, you know, I've done it martially. I've been in, you know, I've been all over the world. And so many things have happened because of it. So it was it's was amazing just from a knee injury that that whole path in my life changed right and and do you do you teach the martial arts part of it or you just do uh, i don't know what <laughs> the basics <laughs> do, you, do you basic basic tai chi i have no I'm, I'm still clu- i'm still kind of clueless as the process as i have <laughs> well, for myself, I am still interested in the martial, but I didn't do it as much. Um, my question to myself and everyone is, well, who, who is your greatest enemy? You know, mm-hmm. What is the threat there? Um, are you gonna, what are the chances of you walking outside of your house, walking outside of your car and getting attacked by physically, you know, hand-to-hand combat with someone? What are the chances of that? Um, but then I ask myself, what is my enemy? What are what is our everybody? What is really our common enemy? And I think our common enemy is stress, aging, and the wear and tear of everyday life. I think that's what faces us all the time, every day. So I think the best choice, of course, there is to focus on how to combat that or how to make peace with that, how to bring that to a neutral point. So... That's why I really have dedicated a little bit more now to Tai Chi for health and longevity and rejuvenation and also mm-hmm. mental and consciousness exploration. Right. So you do that through personal students or classes? And 